What is so triggering about this podcast clip? Let's break it down. Yeah, we got to talk about this viral clip from the whatever podcast. It's titled, These Asian Girls Do Not Like Asian Men. Let's run the clip. What's one race you laddies wouldn't date? Asian. Huh? Oh. Wait, but aren't you, aren't you like half Asian though? Yeah. But like why? What? I just, I've, I've never found an Asian guy attractive. And it's just preference. Me too. Like, I just never have. Like, like I'm not like opposed to it, what? but it's just like, it's it, like never. it just came up in my head. Like, oh, like it's kind of weird that I've like never been attracted to an Asian guy. So like me personally, I. But I would date. I used to not find Asian Asians attractive, but like now I do. I think it's more so like they can relate to me more with like culture and everything mm. like that. So like me personally, I really like, I I like dating Asian guys. Yeah. Stop That's like it. your type now. Get some help. Whoo, <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, are you surprised that there's three thousands comments and growing from non-Asian guys as well as Asian guys chiming in? And some of these comments that people are leaving. Or like a page long. Yeah, I don't know. I think this really hit a uh, uh, hit a chord with a lot of Asian guys because it's very nostalgic in a bad way. So I do think that the crowd that is sending this around because I got we got sent this video before, but it was by like maybe older, like 30 and up guys who had experienced this growing up and are still kind of like, man, it still pains me to see this. Even the young girls do it. I don't know how many Gen Z guys are mad about this. Right. Maybe they saw it. Maybe they're not mad. Ooh, Whatever. Ooh, how about this? For the older millennial guys, Andrew, it's a negative retro. But for the Gen Z guys, it's almost like a peek into the past. Oh. Because, you know, nowadays there's so many like Asian bodybuilders. There's so many like, uh, there's so much more Asian representation. People are talking about how K-pop's blowing up. Mm -hmm. And there's like, like sex tourism from like non-Asian women going to Seoul, Korea. To, you know what I mean? Like yeah. there's a lot of dynamics that have flipped or seemingly flipped in a media sense. This is almost like rewinding the clock, uh, the clock back to 20 years ago. Right? Yeah, but I think these women who said this are fairly young. I would say they're probably under the age of 23, I'm does assuming. It, does it go to show you that as much as some pie slices of society change, some of the other pie slices may be bigger ones that people are not paying as much to because they don't change as much stay the same yeah well guys we're gonna break down this clip we were gonna break down what a lot of people are saying and you know we'll give you our own takeaways and maybe a little bit of advice too so please hit that like button right now and check out other episodes of the hot pop boys hit that like button andrew let's break it down like espn detailed you know kobe bryant's you know his offensive possessions what's happening here like just play by play real i quick. mean listen the probably very attractive hopper girl who's half asian uh, hint, uh says that she would never date an asian guy and she says it kind of like she's proud of saying she's it. quick with it she's not an asian i would never date that and then you know uh but i'm also not surprised i think uh, I'm, I'm more disappointed that f some full non-Asian girls say this than the half ones because oftentimes they have white fathers. So it's like, you know, the man in their life is white. Anyways, guys, different <laughs> dynamics. And then the one girl called, the V girls calls her out. Oh, aren't you half Asian? And she goes, oh, yeah, I don't care. And then the Thai girl says, oh yeah, for the first time in my life, I can't believe I just thought about how I have never dated an Asian guy. Yeah, in fact, and she essentially says, I've never thought about Asian guys until now. Right, That's so she's trying like. to like be moderately against Asian men, but in a yeah. nice way, but it's also dismissive, she's right? She's trying to say like, I just omitted them from my life. I didn't negative, negatively turn them down. And we're gonna get into the reasons why I think she did that. And then of course, Andrew, there's this weird kind of like hot, but like Asperger's white girl in the corner who basically, in my opinion, implies that she would rather date an Asian woman than date an Asian man. Obviously, there may be some orientation aspects that come right, into play right. there. And then the full Via girls rep and she says, no, I date Asian guys now, but for cultural reasons. Right. And then Rhino from Live, Love, Serve, uh, you might've seen some of his videos. He kind of like, he's kind of sitting there listening. I'm sure he's heard this dynamic before and he just says, Matter of, matter of fact, yeah, well, it's because Asian guys have, like, uh, more feminine features like the females, except it plays worse for men. Anyways, we understand that dynamic. We talked about it on the channel. Brian, the host of the Whatever Podcast, comes in, tries to defend Asian guys, even throws in, hey, you know, if I swung that way, I don't know, I think I'd go for Asian guys, too. Thanks, Brian, <laughs> an ally. Um, real quick, Andrew, we got to just address the macro here. When you get a microphone, you get about a, uh, get a bunch of hot young girls. You ask them a, a hot take question and they just give you a incredibly real, but I guess to the internet and to the thinking person, stupid answer, right? Yeah, man. I don't know for a lot of the guys on the internet. I'm not sure why they watch these like male centric podcasts that only have a panel of like ditzy kind of dumb 
hot girls. Like, I know that that's what gets clicks, but honestly, they don't ever really give you that much vital information. I feel like you got to have, like, more women that the guys on the internet are actually going to date, like, on the panel. Anyways, uh, some real personal um, points that we want to make before we get into the comments section. Uh, David, I have seen, with my own eyes, Asian women say that, oh, I don't date Asian guys to a group of Asians full of men and women, and nobody really called them out. And I just think that it's at that point, I'm not saying you got to like cuss people out and be super emotional, but I do think it's at that point where you can call people out in public for this. Right, like, you're just, saying, just it, you're saying in 2023 after like, let's just say this has been happening for 30 years, that the Asian American community can begin to say, how, hey, why'd you say that? How long <laughs> are Asian guys going to take the slander? We've been slandered everywhere yeah. from light to heavy. There is no Asian guy who has not been slandered a little bit. Yeah, I don't care if you're from the hood or you're from the good, which is like a really good neighborhood. You have felt it at some level. I'm not saying some people yeah. haven't felt it way more or less, so, depending on the circles they've inhabited or their own personal stats. What, what I'm saying is I think people need to figure out a way how they're going to word and voice yeah. that out in a civil I, manner. I, I think that this is a really good point, Andrew, because I do feel that some Asian guys have almost gotten to the point where they don't like to hear it, but they just accept it because they're around this attitude so much. No, they Depending just like, if, on if they're like Asians in Hollywood, mainstream spaces, you no, know? Sometimes when you hear stuff like this, especially growing up when you're younger, it's almost like a, a slow knife getting pushed into your chest and you're just like feeling it and you're like, I'll take it. Yeah, all right, oh, sure. It doesn't man. hurt, it doesn't hurt. And then you're just like, I, I remember the first time I heard this was from the, like, the pretty hot girl group at a uh, youth camp. Because we went, obviously we went to a Chinese church and they had youth camp. And I remember they said that out loud. You know what I mean? Like you said, but you're a kid. You don't really know how to handle it, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, I would say a lot of, like, you know, like you're saying, like in sort of these group contexts, a lot of people, they don't know how to handle it, right? No. They don't know how to bring it up and be like, hey, why are you being self-hating? Yeah. No, I'm honestly just make it a joke. Yeah. Hey, you're, why are you self-hating? Hey, you're self-hating. <laughs> What's up with that? And then at least make them think. It's kind of funny. But anyways, guys, uh, yeah, we can get in the comment section. I'm sure there's a lot to talk about. There's a multitude of reactions to it. Yeah, this first comment was basically from a guy who said, uh, I'm on my, I'm like 25 now, but when I was like 15, 16, or 17, this used to really hurt me. But now, like, I've learned to, like, not really care. And, like, I just don't let these these people who feel this way, these women, even if they're really attractive on the outside, you know, shallow side, uh, impact how I feel. Yeah, I think it's important to not let especially uh, random people affect how you feel and control your feelings. Especially, you know, honestly, generally, like, women who say this that are Asian are like, I don't know, I've never dated an Asian guy. It's like, yo, what's your reasoning? Yeah. You gotta have a good reason. And, and usually, to be honest, they're bought into, like, a very white or just a very non-Asian subculture. Mm -hmm. And they feel like that their attachment to the Asian world may hold them back from rising that ladder. Yeah. So they're, like, trying to cut the ties, you know? And yeah. it's almost like Asian guys are, like, the tie. You know, Andrew, we're, like... The, the climber that's that's a goner for on Mount Everest or whatever, and they're just like... like Yeah, yeah. And you know what it is? Again, like, probably they're probably aged like 22, 23, or 21. And it's just funny because you think that we have all this representation, but there's some women who are still part Asian that full Asian. cannot imagine dating an Asian guy or have never met or been exposed to a dateable one, which is interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think it goes to show you that some of the dynamics from 20, 30 years ago, they could still exist in 2023 as much as the right. internet has all these uh, pro-Asian movements or pro-Asian male movements. Um, Andrew, this, some Asian women were firing back in the comments section of the Whatever podcast saying, uh, I forgot to add, I'd like any guy as long as he's not problematic, sexist, racist, and has male entitlement. However, Asian culture checks so many of those boxes, so forgive me. Mm. I mean, I think it uh, does apply to some portion of Asian guys, but I, I feel like not the majority... Is she almost more, is this a sins of a father type situation? I'm not yeah. saying for sure, but like, I generally feel like sometimes girls, and I'm not blaming them, they might have a downside experience with uh, like their dad or something like that, and then project that onto, you know, other second generation immigrants. That Listen, are their man, I, I think that there are reasons and excuses that are better than others. Mm. That's all right, I'm There's a say. range, right? Yeah, there's I'm, a ranking of excuses, say. right? Um, 
This guy said, as an Asian man myself who grew up in New Jersey and New York, it's 100% a masculinity issue. A lot of us are perceived as more feminine, but if you increase your height by wearing lifts, are muscular, going to the gym, and in general, just be more alpha, you can dispel the stereotypes. I know it worked for me. So basically, Andrew, he was almost saying it's a masculinity. I, I mean, this is kind of like the gym bro testosterone thing, right? Yeah, yeah, but I think like, I don't know, when, the, when people say, yo, just be more alpha, it's not just that. I mean, I feel like there's so many layers layers to that you got to be more outspoken you also have to have a personality you have to have passions and interests right. and you actually have to like build this guy up and then you can kind of be more confident and alpha with isn't it. this kind of also I, i'm not saying that first of all this is good advice that's fair but, yeah, but if you if advice. you go up to a bunch of people who have been like eating and i'm not saying this is the 100 great comparison but like if you go up to a bunch of people who have been having bad diets their entire life and then you just are like yo here's this salad here's this lean protein and just like slap it out of their hands. They're just like, is that really going to work too? You know, because if if it is cultural, how do you rewind? No, it's 20 like telling years people of coaching to quit smoking cold turkey. Yeah, just quit smoking. Put the cigarette down. What do you mean? What's so easy? Yeah, just put it down. Just throw yeah. it out. Throw them. Throw them in the trash. And then you're done. You're you're done smoking. <laughs> yeah. Uh, online bullying, just uh, block that person yeah. and that's it. Um, this person said, actually, I think it's a lack of game issue. It's not even a physical thing. Um, uh, culturally, Asians are coached to be beta passive and being shy is harmful for men in the U.S. dating scene. This was uh, uh, the observations of guys, a non-Asian. Guys, I think coaching and training is the right word. I don't like the whole thing about like, oh, it's just game. Oh, guys need to develop their game. Guys, it starts way before that. You need to be trained and coached properly from a young age. Right. And this is where a lot of Asian guys are missing it because we focus so much on school and, and academics and our community is unbalanced and maybe there's not a lot of mentorship. Maybe you're the only Asian kid. You don't have anybody who's looking over you. Your dad's not home. Your dad can't mentor you or your mom can't. Whatever it is, they lack training. And you got to get that training in for years yeah. to fully develop that as part of your it's personality. It's crazy because the STEM books, they will give you 0% training. For in, this. For oh, this zero. particular yeah. lane. Yeah. This guy blamed it on Confucius, of course, saying that Confucianism, uh, all Asians have it, but it happens to suck really for the men more than it sucks for the women. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. That's yeah. interesting. Uh, yeah, man. People just blaming it on Neotony and yeah, Confucius. Yeah, blame it on man. Confucius. I guess there's definitely some blame to go uh, This Asian guy said, I'm a proud Asian guy who's married to a white woman. I know that, for example, a lot of my peers that are also married to white women or non-Asian women are not going to have sellout kids like that. I just feel like a lot of women who marry a white guy are more likely to have that type of kid as an outcome who's uh, like hates one of their sides or thinks one of their sides that makes them up is like the weak side or the uncool side. Yeah, generally, obviously, like, man, and if the dad is Asian, you would assume that the kid is probably going to be more likely to be proud. I've definitely met proud hoppas and children who have an, an Asian mother and yeah. white dad. But I will say generally in a family, yeah. if a woman, especially an immigrant woman or foreigner woman marries into an American family, which culture are they going to buy more into? Yeah. Probably the American. Take the fan duel odds, guys. I'm betting yeah, they're going to bet, you know, they're they're buy into the American system and the right. American standards and everything. Um, This guy said, I will never understand why people of different groups are repulsed by people from their same ethnic group. This guy said, self-loathing psychologically and naturally, a person is most attracted to somebody closest to them. So therefore, it's safe to say there's some deep trauma that had to have to occur for someone to go out of their way to exclude someone who looks closest to them and prefer somebody greatly who does not look like them. Yeah, I think the whole attitude of like writing off Asian guys and being disgusted by them is the is the real offensive part. You know, I think the girl who said, well, you know, come to think about it, I've never really dated an Asian guy and I've never really found any attractive. That is bad as well, but almost not as bad as just being like, yeah, I just won't date him. I just won't. Right. And then I'm going to tell all my friends to not do it too. Yeah, it's, it's like, bad. holy crap, you're anti-Asian? What happened to you? Yeah, I mean, I think we're all subject to our upbringings, right? I mean, we are growing up in Western society. Not everybody grows up in an Asian enclave. Not everybody even goes to a high school or middle school that's like 20% Asian, right, you know? Right, right, right. So I guess that all those things would have a huge impact on your brain, what you like, what you like to eat, how you speak. Uh, the, all these things are environmental and America's a very diverse country, right? Somebody said, Asian dudes are actually very good men, hardworking, intelligent, humble, and loyal. However, they were usually viewed as good, nice guys, and that is considered uncool in 2023 unless you are looking for a husband that is also a church leader. Yeah, so uh, I have heard from 
multiple Asian women that I have gone out with or talked with or met that they said that they do, they are attracted to Asian guys, but they literally have never been hit on by Asian guys or it's never really like just happened, you know? Because a lot of people will kind of date who's around them or who's coming after right. them. And if no guys approach them and are constantly like, you know, being suitors for them, then that's almost, those are a lot of their options. They're just gonna, their options are who's coming for them. Right. I, I guess simplistically, if you were to not... Like in a like, simple manner is yeah, what I'm in, saying. In a simple manner, almost like your yeah. average person making average reads so, and, no, and, and uh, taking the incoming versus sending outgoing. And I doubted this, but I thought about it for a while and I was like, no, it's definitely possible that some girls are actually open to Asian guys, but have just never been exposed or been approached by any. Yeah, decent, no, it's you know? possible. I think there's a lot of sides to this coin. It's not just a coin, so it's it, an eight-sided it, die. And you know what it is? I hate using the word aggressive, but guys, Asian guys do need to be more, like, assertive and, uh, I guess, aggressive when they go out and meet women. Right, and probably, uh, you know, like... Because other people like, are way more aggressive. Dude, like, how, you know, like, everybody and, says, like... White people hit on every the the girls, but the girls like never get Asian dudes. Yeah, and on. it is different for every type of Asian guy, right? Like I would say, like uh, you know, V it's fifty fifty, but Filipino guys tend to hit on women more, yeah, and maybe, then Chinese guys true. definitely hit on women less. Um, somebody said this is a small sample size, but I'm pretty sure if there was five girls of their race and three of them only willing to date one of them and they were like black or Latino, they would probably flip out and at least point it out to their face. Um, how come it seems like Asian guys are the only guys that would never point out this type of stuff, uh, even if it was right in front of their eyes? Nah, I think Asian dudes got to call it out. And I will say this, Asian guys have been overall, overall, across the board, generally fairly chill about taking in all the slander that we get. Oh, you're, I think right, you're so. talking about the emasculation, right? Yeah. I feel uh, like that Asian guys have maybe handled it well, maybe too yeah. well. And I, I'll tell you this. I'll, I'll be honest about this, and I got to keep it real. Emasculation, I think a lot of people like to use that word, but they don't really know what it means. It means that even though you are a man, you're not treated with the respect that a man commands. You're not treated like the stalwart of your community. You're basically treated like a role player on your own squad. Right. Which, are, whereas to me, I'm not saying that I haven't heard, because I, I, we have a lot, lot of diverse friend groups, you know what I mean? Like, um, like, I've heard black or Latina women voice, you know, some, you know, everybody's got pros and cons, right? Everybody's got pros and cons about how they view their significant others or their others in their community. But it's like, they would never air it out on a podcast like that, because that's so emasculating, because they would be like, oh, I can't do that to my uncle, I can't do that to my father, exactly. I got like too much respect exactly. for, for OG, you know? Yeah, I mean, it does, it is a family thing. If that family didn't build in that respect, then that's kind of their fault too. Right. Um, somebody said, as an Asian man, take these women, please. I mean, yes and no. I think that that's a, a great way to handle it. But no, I, trust me, they're already taken. Yeah. They're already taken. <laughs> what do you mean take them? <laughs> they've been, or I don't want to say they've been taken. They've been, they've given themselves away. <laughs> um. Somebody said, these are the type of women I always thought I wanted to meet in my 20s. Then I became really successful in my mid-30s. And those same girls would hit me up. But I was already with a young wife that was much younger, hotter, and much more traditional than them. Uh, yeah, I don't know if this is fully true. But yes, I understand what you're saying. That these definitely are the type of girls you really want to date when you're like... 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You're like all about these girls. Right. These like blonde acting Asian girls that are not like hood. You, a lot of guys like this. I mean, are these girls not the 2023 version of Mean Girls? Like yeah. that, uh, that movie, No, they're right? essentially, they're, clueless, you know, the they're kind of like Asian Barbies. And I don't mean the ABG ones. I'm saying these girls are like not ABGs. Right, and we're not talking about the meta movie that's like real thoughtful. They just came out Barbie. We're talking about the actual you know, yeah. Malibu Barbie. Let's go, Barbie. Let's go, party. <laughs> um, this guy said, as a black guy, this doesn't really affect me, but I feel for my Asian brothers out there. I've always been of the oh. belief that Asian women have white fever far more than white guys have yellow fever. Stay mm. strong, boys. Um, really interesting empathy. I mean, Rhino, I wouldn't say he was this empathetic, but he, I definitely, when he said it, she. I remember Rhino in the podcast was like, ah, this again. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you, you hear this from black and... Uh, to a lesser extent, Latino guys. So they said that Asian women have white fever more than white guys have yellow fever. Um, it's tough to put on a percentage on it. So I, I guess I guess that's an interesting idea. Yeah, I think it's on a case-by-case basis. It definitely case takes two to tango, yeah. but I don't know which it is. Which pie? Hey, Andrew, I always say, man, usually people can agree on the pie slices on the on the pie chart. No, you mean but what? They, but they always disagree over distribution. Right. 
Um, somebody just said, this guy said, as an Asian guy, I can tell you that being an Asian guy, I, I think he was speaking to the non-Asian guys in the comments, that being an Asian guy in Western countries is the worst. Personally, I was open to all ethnicities, but then I realized that white, black, Middle Eastern, all types of women from the Western hemisphere basically see Asian men as inferior and weak, and I was always going to take a huge fractionation or tax on my value. Yeah, yeah. I will say this, I will say this. In the mainstream Western Anglo society for any English speaking countries, there is a tax for sure on being an Asian guy. Yeah. Now, how big is that tax could vary person to person in fishbowl to fishbowl. It really depends on uh, what type of person from that community you're meeting. Because if you're only meeting like Shahs of Sunset Middle Eastern girls, they are not going to be into Asian guys. Like they're not, the hot <laughs> Arab girls... I've rarely seen it, but, but there are, I've also seen guys get with Middle East. Like, you know what I mean? Right, so right, right. It just, yeah. If, you, if you're talking about the hottest person of each group, you know, it is tough. But, but you know so. what it is too, man? Not everybody, like we said, Andrew, is going to be like a tall, good looking, charismatic guy who works as a bartender or a nightlife. You got to think how many more reps that somebody who works in that particular field with, you know, certain particular prerequisite stats, they're almost going to see like maybe at some point, 10,000% or 10,000x more reps mm. than a regular guy, yeah. right? With Without those stats, too. So it, it can shift so much, guys. Everybody's talking about life is infinitely complex. Somebody said it uh, has to do with uh, Eurocentric beauty standards. You know what I mean? Everything from changing the shape of your eyes to the shape of your nose to skin bleaching, et cetera, et cetera. This is just a fact of the Asian world. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's an interesting perspective, too. I think that, you know, like we said, it's a whole pie thing. Um Somebody's just said, you know, it all comes down to exposure. Now that we get more media exposure, just like K-pop, that's got its own little wave. Even though that's not a mainstream wave, it's a growing niche. Andrew, how much is it about just representation? Yo, this, I this is the representation uh, I, mean, I always say, man, the most important representation is in real life, face-to-face. -face. That is the most important representation in changing this, is that Asian dudes got to meet and talk to people in real life or at least on the apps or something. You know what I mean? Right. Like, but, it but, cannot, but, so you, are, are you, you saying, not rely on the movies and K-pop. The they It does something, 100%. It does something, but most important is in real life and exposure in real life. And this is the issue. A lot of Asian guys are into STEM fields, right? So you spend a lot of time studying engineering, medical, And, and to be honest, tech. those are, are primarily male as well. Yeah, those are primarily male, heavily Asian, not very... Uh, like blonde female -y. So you're not going to get a lot in FaceTime talking to blonde girls or not just blonde girls or even different types of girls, you know. Just fun girls just in general. Just fun people. <laughs> just fun. They're not fun, you know. No, they can be great people, but they're just not necessarily fun. They don't develop people. your like social skills on that level. Right. Uh, Andrew, this was a really interesting comment. This guy was a, uh, said as a gay Asian, it's depressing on this side of the spectrum too. What is this comment trying to say? Yeah, well, it's uh, just trying to say that uh, that as a gay Asian guy, this person has been attracted to Asian men, but some of those Asian men are just only attracted to white guys. So so some Asian dudes in the in the LGBT world are also self-hating. So they're just pulling the same thing that these pretty girls did on the whatever podcast, yeah, they would, but just, they, just in a different No, they world. would say the same thing. Yeah, like, I, I would never date an Asian dude. You know, like, <laughs> that's... Uh, and then they also... And then this guy also pointed out that he has rarely ever been hit on by another Asian, only by white dudes in his world. So it's like, it also goes back to even in the LGBT world, right. Asian guys are still not hitting on and, other and Asian does guys. Does this almost serve as a uh, a control for the science experiment? Yeah. Just the fact that it's like mirrored in a different orientation? I just I guess? think like, man, white dudes, they really get after it, man. And it's, maybe it's, because it's their country. I don't, yeah, know. I, don't know. They, <laughs> I don't know. They did take over the world for the last 400 years. Anyway, uh, somebody said, I'm a white guy and I'm married to an Asian woman. I know lots of other my friends who did the same because most American women just aren't traditional anymore. They can sure drink like their father, but they sure can't cook like their mother. But these Asian women, they still got all the skill sets. That's a funny bar. That's a funny bar. Yeah, I do think a lot of white women, I don't know. I don't want to stereotype them. Can they not cook nowadays? You let me know in the comments down below. <laughs> Yeah, but they can. They know all the rap lyrics to the rap songs that I don't know either. Yeah, Why don't they, they learn rap, the countries to the country songs? They be rapping their whole songs at their weddings. <laughs> I don't like it.
I try to be down with it, but I know I don't. Um, somebody said, as an Asian guy, I know that life isn't fair, but you got to make do with what you got. Somebody, uh, there was a lot of arguing back and forth. Some guys were like, dude, why are you giving up? I mean, I think this guy wasn't like super good looking or anything like that or tall or anything. Mean... And then this guy was like saying, no, man. It's smart. I'm a doctor now, and I'll tell you this. This is why Asian men tend to have long-term relationships and successful careers because we have way too many life challenges, especially socially, so we have no choice but to hustle and be consistent. Mm. So basically, uh, I, I do think, by the way, there are Asian F-boys, you know, obviously, especially in Gen Z. But still, I would say com in comparison, probably if you made me guess, in comparison to every other group, maybe still the lowest amount of F-boys, right? Yeah, maybe percentage-wise, yeah. Yeah, Probably anyway, Andrew, let's just get into the, the takeaways and uh, some suggestions. I mean, I would say to that last comment, man, there's so many different ways you can approach, like, feeling like you're at a disadvantage, right? You can either accept it, you can have a monk-like mindset, you can either be set on fire to get in the gym and get super ripped, super low body fat to try to, you know what I mean, to fight it, or like, I guess what I'm saying is there's a lot of different ways to attack it mentally and emotionally, right? Yes, yes, and I, I hope that any guy who's feeling down is seeking advice on the internet from on YouTube by the dozens and hundreds of channels about male self-improvement, some Especially that are ran specifically by Asians. For Asians. Yeah, oh, some that are yep. ran with Asians. Move to the enclave. Yeah. Especially nowadays, everybody's working from home. You can move anywhere you want. You can avoid this type of woman. But this type of woman is actually still always going to exist, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, for a while. But I do think the numbers are going down. Thank God they didn't all want to do podcasts like 20 years ago. It was it was worse. Oh, man, it would have been crazy. I mean, that's why... Because then the, there would have been no, like... Yeah. That's why, in a way, the women who said it back then, were it was even worse because it took so much more work to get on a microphone and get those words published. Oh, you had to want to say it. Like, yeah, thought about harder. it a lot. Yeah, because yeah. there wasn't a lot of media back yeah, then self-produced. Yeah, but now media, people, things just fly out of people's mouths. And, um, I would say this. The, first, the truth is, as much as people see this, the whatever podcast is filmed in Santa Barbara, Andrew, it's probably very white there. Like you said, Santa Barbara, Barbie. That's very much that Ken Barbie culture. Well, just move somewhere. I always tell people this. Don't go to UCSB. Don't go to University California, Santa Barbara. I always told people, that's a mistake, bro. You don't fit in with the beach bros and the beach blonde babes. Like, go to UCI, go to UCLA, you know, and then you, you more find your tribe, right? Like, really I mean, I'm funny. saying, I'm saying different people are tapped into different things. Like if you see, if you meet an Asian girl who's like a, really in a basketball or like a rapper or something like that, she might date like black guys. These girls were clearly tapped into yeah. white culture. They're looking for, for blonde dudes. Yeah. Also, if you're not one of these Asian guys and you don't feel like, uh, you know, just don't get emotional about this. Like why let what random people say on a podcast dictate how you feel? That's like the worst thing you could do, you know? But again, man, seek improvements and, uh. You know, it's a long, it's a long road ahead, boys. Yeah, I mean, I guess ultimately, Andrew, what do you think? Because this is probably not the last time we're going to see this exact dynamic pop up, right? Because this is like uh, people, you know, have uh, been sending the street interview clips. Now it's the whatever podcast. Who knows what it'll be like three months from now? Yeah, who knows why, like, even these, po are these podcasts helpful? Where they gather a bunch of, like, above average looking women, but like that they like kind of ditzy and then like one clever host and then the women always look stupid. I don't understand why they go on the podcast. I don't get it. But anyways, you guys let me know in the comments down below what you think about and make all sure, this. Yeah, make sure you go over to this link right here, the whatever podcast uh, clip link that has like, 4,000 replies on it. Read some of them. Let us know what you think in the comments section below. Um, what do you think of the clip? Is this newsworthy? Not newsworthy? Is it old school? Is it new school? Is it relevant to you? Is it not relevant to you? Uh, we couldn't even get to everything that we wanted to talk about in this podcast, but we got to wrap it up, guys. Let us know what you think. Uh, keep it civil. Until next time, we got Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.